We'll move to the um, joint meeting of the Glendale City Council and the successor agency. We have roll call for the City Council, please. Council Member Friedman. Here. Carpetian. Here. Najarian. Here. Sinanian. Here. Mayor Devine. Here. And for the um, successor agency, please. Agency Member Friedman. Here. Carpetian. Here. Najarian. Here. Sinanian. Here. Mayor Devine. Here. And next. The agenda for the August 30th, 2016 Joint Public Meeting of the City Council and the Housing Authority was posted on Friday, August 26, 2016 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Okay. Uh, and next item. One, Director of Community Development sorry, and Library. I'm sorry, what was it read, read into the record as housing and, and... Housing Authority. But this should be the successor agency. Successor no? agency and Glendale City Council. Successor agency and City Council. Yep, this is... Uh, the, the I just want to direct it to the agenda. Right. Right. The, the agenda. The yeah, the agenda is mistaken. Yeah. We'll correct that. I'll read that one more time. Okay. The agenda for the August 30th, 2016 joint public meeting of the City Council and successor agency was posted on Friday, August 26, 2016 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. And then item, one, please. Next item. One would be Director of Community Development and Library Arts and Culture regarding contract with AMEC Foster Wheeler Environment and Infrastructure Incorporated for the Geotechnical Solis Engineering and Materials Testing Report Review Services for Glendale Central Library Renovation Project, specification number 3551R. 1A, Council Motion Authorizing an Amendment to the Professional Service Agreement, Purchase Order Number C106020, with Amic Foster Wheeler Environment and Infrastructure Incorporated for additional geotechnical soils testing Foundation Observation and Materials Testing Report Review Services in the amount of $125,298. B would be Glendale, Glendale Successor Agency Motion authorizing an amendment to the Professional Service Agreement Purchase Order Number C106020 with AMIC Foster Wheeler Environment and Infrastructure Incorporated for geotechnical soils testing Foundation Observation and Material Testing Report Review Services in the amount of $125,298. Thank you. Mr. Ochoa? Yes, ma'am. Last year when we commenced uh, the library renovation project at Central Library, we did so with a combination of funding of the successor agency and the city, and that's why this is a joint meeting of the city and successor agency. Uh, the item before you is the augmentation of existing contract with soils uh, engineer also dealing with uh, reporting and testing of uh, materials. Uh, what we have is a situation where uh, this being a remodel, some conditions that are present on the job were not anticipated uh, simply because as you open things up and you see what needs are uh, above and beyond what an engineer's estimate would have indicated. Other items uh, that are listed out in your staff report indicate that we were hopeful to not have to expend this much money for the testing but which are being required by the engineer and the, uh, the project architect. Uh, and lastly, a couple of the other factors that are necessitating an increase in this particular contract uh, speak to the ability of the contractor to uh, accelerate uh, the construction process. Now, that is a benefit to the contractor, uh, but because this is a contract of the city and its successor agency, what we would rather do is bring to you the 125,298 uh, contract augmentation and whatever savings we're able to derive by the acceleration of the project from the contractor, instead of having the contractor pay for that, have uh, that that savings be realized by the city and successor agency and the successor agency city would uh, absorb the cost of this contract in order to avoid any kind of conflict between the inspector, uh, the inspection services and uh, the general contractor. If you have specific questions about the work uh, by AMIC and why it's necessitated, um, certainly Mr. Golanian can address those for you. Uh, but we would ask for the dual uh, motions by uh, the council and the successor agency at this point. Do we have any questions? For the uh, kind of an override, would you say? Effectively, I think that's one way to characterize it, certainly. But we're going to, you know, some of the things that we're doing, it needs to be done. Right, right. We didn't anticipate and it uh, needs to be done. Any questions? I have, I have some maybe comments. Uh, 
These are, these are really large contracts. This is a $20 million project. And uh, I understand in the remodel process, you always have, uh, there are things that are hidden and you don't know in the beginning. But it says waterproofing and vapor barrier installation. If this was not part of our project, and it has to be inspected now because it was unforeseen and, and, and we have to do it now. Who's going to pay for the actual work to be done? Are we adding to our contract that we have on the, on the construction side as well? Because uh, it says concrete placement was anticipated to be in larger volumes. Now it's in a smaller volumes because of the, 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 the scheduling or what have you. This is not a small amount. Their entire contract was 130, 40,000. Now it's almost double the amount. And my question is, all the issues that we have right now, and this was hidden, and now we have to get it done, is this going to add to that $20 million besides what we have here? And it says that we're paying this with the library mitigation fee fund, and I don't know what fund, what fund that is, and I'd like to know how much, how much do we have in there, and how are we... What and how fine is it, and how is it being funded? How, how do we pay for that? Um, good afternoon, and I'm Mayor, members of the council, and the successor agency. Uh, the vapor inspection around the fiber-wrapped beams were always going to be performed. It was a necessity as part of the construction. However, it's a specialty work, and we originally were planning on hiring a special uh, testing company to perform it. So this was excluded from the original proposal by AMAC. However, it needs to be done. Come find out, AMAC can actually perform this type of work. They have the specialty in-house. So either it's going to be a third or a second consulting firm, or this firm, it had to be done. It so happens they have the specialty in-house, we'll add it to their contract. Uh, to answer your other question, the construction amount does not change, Mr. Garpetian. Uh, this is above and beyond what you have authorized for the construction contract, essentially. But as Mr. Ochoa mentioned, uh, we have accelerated the construction, the completion of the work by at least three months. Uh, we are anticipating to have substantial completion by December 23rd of this year, as opposed to March or April of next year. So that's going to necessitate an additional full-time, continuous inspector at the job site. So that essentially, when it comes to the labor cost, it doubles up. But it's to the city's benefit, obviously. We get to open the library earlier. The DIF uh, is the development impact fees that are paid into a library account. I don't have that information as how much we have in the balance, but Ms. Clear is here, and she can respond to that unless you have any other questions. Yeah, so just following up on that waterproofing and vapor barrier installation. So the installation was there, but the inspection portion of it was not part of the contract. Not part of the this inspection. The inspect, ins, inspection of the installation of that vapor barrier was not part of the contract. And Yes, Mr. Garpetti, and we want to keep those independent of the contractor. We want a third-party unbiased inspection. And, and you had another um, question about pouring the concrete. So at the time when we received the fee proposals from these consulting firms, the assumption, typical assumption, is that they will have larger pours. Uh, most of this cost is um, surrounding the, the eight new shear walls, that five of which we have already installed. Uh, so the, the assumption was it's going to be a larger pour, but once we saw the pours, the architect and the um, structural engineer off the record recommended to do it in smaller pours, which means more frequent inspections. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Anyone else? <coughs> well, I just wanted to say that I think we should all be proud to be part of a council that's putting resources, uh, so many resources, into our library system. It's going to be a great benefit to all of the people who use the library and all the children who use the library, and I can't wait to see it when it opens. And also, congratulations on the three months before the scheduled uh, opening. Is that correct? That's fantastic. So, and when was okay. that date again, the completion time? December. Substantial completion by December, um, and we will make a March uh, full-blown re-grand opening to introduce the entire community back to their central library by March of 17. Fantastic. Good job. Good job. Do I have a motion? Um, 
For the res oh, let's see that. I'll move 1A for the council. Sure. Second, is there a second? Second. And roll call, please. Council members Friedman. Yes. Carpetian. Yes. Ajarian. Yes. Sinanian. Yes. Mayor Devine. Yes. Did you move both of those? Uh, I'll move 1B for the successor agents. Thank you. Second? Second. Roll call, please. Agency members Friedman. Yes. Arpetian. Yes. Najarian. Yes. C9 Yen. Yes. Mayor Devine. Yes. Next item. Is, Adjournment. Okay. For the City Council, please. A mm -hmm. motion. So moved. Second. And for the successor agency. Moved. Second. Thank you. We are adjourned. And we'll move on to special meeting of the Glendale City Council for August the 30th. 